Today's luncheon. Welcome everyone to today's lunch and learn session with ISC. Today is our fourth and final journey of our CPQ summer journey. It's hard to believe that the summer is coming to a close. <laughs> it's gone very fast. I heard the uh, third journey, which I was not uh, here for as I was on PTO summer vacation myself, uh, went very well. So uh, I'm happy to pick up the tail end of this and draw it to its conclusion. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sherry Widrick. I am a senior account executive with ISC, and I will be your moderator for today's session. Today, we are having an open mic roundtable discussion uh, in conjunction with two customers who are presenting their CPQ summer or their CPQ journeys that they've had. Um, and then we will open it up with the customers as well as with a group of CPQ experts uh, who can answer all of your questions that, that you may have. Um, just for now, uh, everyone is in listen-only mode. And if you have questions that you would like to uh, submit via chat, you should be able to do that. I also understood we had an issue with our chat feature in the previous session. So I think we fixed that. So hopefully now the chat feature will work. <laughs> Uh, so you can submit questions via chat and you can, we'll also open it up toward the end uh, where you can ask your questions directly of our customers as well as the CPQ experts. So moving along, let me just do a quick recap. Here we are in our, our summer journey. And I know there may be someone who may be joining who hadn't had a chance to participate in the first three sessions. Uh, so we are here in our fourth session, August 24th, uh, with our open mic roundtable. And then the final destination will be at the Empower Conference where we will host the workshop. And I'll come back to that and uh, go into that in a little greater detail uh, shortly. So let me just review the agenda for today. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and stop my video so um, I can see my full screen and not be annoying to you. Okay, there. So. Uh, our agenda for today is we will have two customers sharing their CPQ stories. Um, and then we were going to have an announcement from Infor, a very exciting and timely announcement. And then we will open it up for the roundtable discussion. And then we'll wrap it up with a review of your next steps as part of your CPQ journey. So without any further ado, let me introduce to you our First guest speaker from our first customer, John Bender. He is CIO of DMI Companies. John, are you out there? I'm here. All right, very good. Thank you for joining us today. And if you wouldn't mind just doing a quick introduction of who you are and who DMI is and the products that you make, and then I'll go ahead and advance the slides when you're ready. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, John, as you just announced, uh, I am the CIO for DMI. You know, one of my primary responsibilities is driving the strategic IT initiatives um, and basically align them with with the business goals, the business goals and strategies. Uh, one of our recent overarching initiatives that we started in 2015 has been the convergence of IT and OT. Uh, to a better uh, mature industry 4.0 um, methodology as far as how we operate as a business. Uh, DMI companies is a uh, consists of four strategic business units uh, ranging from uh, air distribution, you know, duct systems, uh, registers, dampers, fire dampers, things of that of that nature. Been in business since 1978. Um, we're we're proud you know, union made, uh, currently operate in uh, California, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. All right, I can do this slide real quick for you. Yeah. Um, I put this together just to kind of create a vision of how they are currently structured within their uh, CPQ and XA environment. Um, you'll see on the left-hand side of your screen, the XA environment. So they're currently at XA release 9.1 on-premise uh, and in the process of upgrading to release 10 as we speak. They currently have 135 concurrent users 
And as you heard, they are multi-site. And for their dealer portal application, they are using the XA ComNet application. On the CPQ side, they are using the CPQ configurator on-premise, and they started their implementation in 2019. And as I mentioned, uh, in, there is bi-directional integration between uh, XA and CPQ with, of course, uh, as you learned in our last session, uh, supported by the ISC unique item generator application. All right, back to you, John. Yeah, so obviously one of our overarching goals uh, was with our recent acquisition of Lindab Incorporated, uh, which they offered, uh, you know, every product that they offer to the, you know, to the, to the market is all built to order or made to order. Um, and that presented a challenge considering that they were running a, you know, disparate ERP system and that ERP system was exact. Exapto, which had a built co configurator that was developed in-house using internal resources. Uh, we needed to replace that. And, and obviously having over a billion possible permutations of ductwork um, definitely was, uh, was one of the goals to make that available to our customers as well as our internal staff. Um, and had to have a product you know, from configuration to order entry, to manufacturing, to shipping, the entire process excluding the manufacturing of the components without human intervention. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, we're made up of four strategic business units. Uh, two of our uh, business units are the, are the ones that we're focusing on uh, as far as CPQ related as they are both very closely uh, you know, intertwined. Um, our CPQ development with uh, with links uh, has has been a more or less a three year uh, you know road, <laughs> and we're approximately ninety eight point five percent complete. The interesting part is you know is the amount of unique items that we have had to date, and and coming from a business, and I'll speak for DMI, prior to the implementation of CPQ, each and every item was manually done by the accounting group, by the operations group, et cetera. Um, and looking at the amount of unique items to date that, you know, that just seems like that's a, that could have never even happened. So that's a true success story for CPQ. Um, and I guess also more to the, the stats, you know, you know, roughly 125 unique items each day, which means that on any given day, there's going to be something that is unique, you know, exclusively to that customer. Um, ATI. Um, it is kind of a slower start. Obviously, Lynx has taken the priority, um, but we fully plan to have that, uh, you know, live sometime in 2023. Our future plans uh, is to go from on-prem to cloud, uh, you know, when that integration uh, opens up for XA. Um, there's also a lot of interest around the 2D imagery, you know, having it more dynamic, expanding, contrasting, things of that nature. Um, but also taking it to the next level. I mean, we leverage, you know, we do a lot of plan and spec business. So for our customers, we, we, will, we will estimate overlay over CAD drawings and then obviously, you, you know, provide them a detailed drawing and having that level level of integration with those tools, in addition to CRM, would definitely take us to the next level. Lessons learned. Um, yeah, so I guess the very last statement should be the very first, you know, is single source of the truth. And I think, you know, with what we were doing at the time, you know, there was a lot of moving parts, a lot of various faces that we have encountered through our journey. Um, and kind of what was early taught was kind of set in stone. And, you know, it's one of those things that, you, you know, that we wish we would have done a little bit more homework up front, I guess, you know, and involve more people. One of our most uh, significant challenges is the include rule set versus create component rule sets. Um, there is a 50-50 split as far as if that's really an issue versus just a, a, a uh, inconvenience, but um, as well as, as the, you know, the UIG product, which ISC does sell, um, we went into that very, 
blindfolded, if you will, as far as what how that project would evolve. Um, and it's probably, you know, uh, kudos to Charles, you know, for making a pretty robust solution for us. Um, it has worked, uh, you know, it does suit the needs of the business, but just the overwhelming complexity behind that, um, again, that was a unforeseen uh, issue. Uh, training and knowledge, uh, test and validation, the daily care and feeding, these are all areas, I, I don't know, I can't speak to other people that use CPQ, but uh, this has turned into a full-time gig for a big part of our staff to where you know, it just requires that daily that daily touch, you know, find out what what works, what doesn't work and, and you know, reacting to those issues as quickly as possible, you know, equates to, you know, a more harmonized uh, system and, and, and operations. Um, and, and then kind of last but not least, the best practices, you know, we're kind of developing those as we go i we we pretty much know what works and what doesn't work for us and i think that it, it has helped us translate that into a meaningful endeavor when it comes to ati which is our next business unit but uh again you know i, I guess the you know the the moral of the story is is you know do a lot more research do a lot more training involve a lot more people um, and I think that we would have had a, a rather quicker road to implementation. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing your story. Um, as with every software project or any project, I suppose, uh, there's always lessons to be learned and perhaps these unforeseen benefits that you didn't expect going into it. So we appreciate you sharing all of that. You know, as I, as I tell everybody, there's always the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? <laughs> so we just wanted to touch on those things just to give everyone a sense of uh, what those things might be. So appreciate that, John, very much. Um, so next up, we have uh, our second customer story. Uh, we have with us Chase Ehler. He is a senior IT manager with a company called Penco Products. Um, their story is uh, quite a bit different uh, where uh, DMI has been a longtime XA customer and uh, a CPQ customer for the past few years. Um, Penco is actually embarking on a migration to XA from SAP and implementing CPQ to replace the SAP configurator. So a very different story to tell. Um, so I'd like ask Chase if he would share his story, knowing that they're about to go live, <laughs> hopefully October, the first week in October. So uh, Chase, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and a little bit more about Penco products, I'd appreciate it. Everybody hear me all right? Oh, I can hear you now. Okay, if you hear any pounding, uh, ask my plant my manager to stop production, but he says the uh, sound of money and he's not stopping. So. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. yeah. So we're Penco Products. Um, we are a supplier and manufacturer of locker and shelving products. We focus mainly on lockers, but we do uh, a good bit of shelving and then garment products as well. Uh, we have a distribution network throughout um, North America, and I think we got about like 10 or 11 warehouses. You know, our logistics and distribution is about half the company, and then you know the manufacturing is about the other half. So you know we uh, I, we're in the middle of an implementation, so I apologize for not having everything laid out, but our bread and butter is lockers. And we're coming, uh, we can go to the next slide. If you wanna go into this. Uh, sure, sure. And similarly, I, I put their structure together as well. So on the left-hand side is the AS400 or, or Power9, I guess. Um, and they are in the process, as I mentioned, of going from SAP on a 400 to XA release 10. Um, they will be bringing up NetLink in a purely uh, graphical, uh, user interface, no green screen. And that is, like I said, in progress, hoping to go live here in a couple months. They have 70 concurrent XA users and are multi-site as well. 
And then on the left side or on the right side, you'll see the CPQ configurator is also on premise, premise and it's in progress. And their dealer portal application is the CPQ sales portal application. Um, again, with utilizing the UIG tool from ISC to help support the bi-directional integration. All right, back to you, Chase. So uh, we first started our journey, much like uh, John here. It's refreshing actually to hear his story first because almost everything he told you all is echoed from us, our experience. Um, we started really, I think we purchased and got going in 2019, Terry. And I think so. We're coming from a legacy SAP system. We hadn't had any updates installed on it since 2008. So, you know, we've been very fortunate to not have the system crash on us and, you know, make it to the point we are now. But throughout the years, we weren't able to update our configurator. The person who originally programmed and wrote it passed away. And it kind of was always a theory at Penco. Nobody touched the configurator because we were scared to break it. And you know the resulting, the results of this is if we ever had a, I guess it should have been in the history section, but the result of that is if we ever wanted to launch a new product line, new standard features, anything like that, we would actually hard bill every single part in our system. And you're talking about consuming engineering resources, taking forever to bring uh, a new product to actual market. It was uh, causing a lot of a stress on not just the system, but employees, you know, the company. So, the, uh, you know, the choice was made. We've been trying to get a new ERP system. We ended up going with XA, uh, and in turn with that, you know, getting the new configurator. I think we actually were sold on the configurator first, and then we were like, okay, what ERP system can we go with uh, to go along with that, and uh, so CPQ is what sold us on the whole project. The, we also have in-house quoting software, and we had that developed custom. We distribute it to every one of our distributors, however many salespeople they want. They install it on their local computers. And after that point, you know, what happens after that, you know, it, it, it's a free-for-all. So we have some customers, they have older versions of the software with old pricing, you know, our whole quoting system is just all over the place. And when we originally started our ERP project, you know, we did a gap analysis and we found over 50% of our, our gaps were before the order ever got to our, our building. So, you know, the, the quoting, the configurator, you know, those are probably two of the leading factors for us exploring actually getting a new ERP. Uh, the original goal, and now that we decided we were going to replace it, was uh, you know everybody wanted it. What we're quoting a no-touch order, and John had the same thing on his, where a customer can create an order, the parts that go on the order are validated. You know you shouldn't be able to have a 24-inch wide door on a 16-inch wide locker. It just won't work. Um, the way we we also sell accessories, so we wanted to be able to add accessories to our order and upsell our customers and make sure that they get accessories that work with what they order. And you know the the ultimate goal would be to have it actually do a whole takeoff, uh, similar to how John said, where I have a drawing, you know, a floor plan or something similar, and be able to say, okay, this many lockers will run on this wall, this many will run on that. That that's the end goal. And you know, so that's uh, where we were trying to go by getting CPQ and a quoting solution with it. And we, uh, at the time, we went with Sales Portal. We'll get back to that. The other thing was the automatic pricing, uh, especially now with uh, the way the supply chain and with, is, you know, making sure you get accurate pricing on your quotes. Very important. That way we could recoup our costs on our surcharges and everything. Like I said before, when we had our, our software, the version kind of fragmented. It, it was a free-for-all on what the quotes actually came with the pricing on them, and then it ran into all kinds of issues. So that is the number one goal of this whole project, is getting that part fixed. The, uh, you know, 
other goals, the kind of fancier stuff, if we could automate our 2D drawings, we have a whole department, you know, dedicated to uh, getting elevation drawings and whatnot to our distributors so they can bid jobs correctly. And, you know, we offer that service, but it's uh, it's pretty labor intensive if you can imagine. So the more we could do to automate that, the, the better. And then, you know, also taking some uh, time, you know, helping out our customer service team and having a customer portal for a customer to check their order status, their invoices, et cetera. Those are all major gaps that we had, you know, going into this project and the goals that we had for, you know, going to CPQ. Where we're at now, this is where our story is a little bit different than John's, is we're still in pre, you know, pre-implementation. Uh, so, you know, we started our journey in 2019. Then everybody knows along came COVID. Resources got thin, not just at our company, but you know, uh, support channels. Uh, we, we had several issues along the road that had delayed our project. Uh, but you know, we're we we got our configurator built. That's the main thing. Um, we got, we were able to go in and discontinue old options in the configurator. We were able to add in whole product lines to CPQ. We you know, standardized, uh, we have a big standardization project going on here. So we're really trying to push the customers, you know, buy our standard product, and then if you want to buy any kind of special options or anything, make sure they get upcharged for it. And with the configurator, you're actually able to like present those rules to people, prompt them, let them know it's going to cost more, and that might drive them more to get the uh, the special or the standard product they can still order the special but kind of before we were letting our customers run all over us and just order whatever they wanted and then we weren't properly getting our money for it so that's a great thing we were able to get it built we only have one rules writer which uh talking with some other companies is you know they, they have two three sometimes more so I can say, you know, he was able to do that. Uh, we did leverage a lot from Renaissance Tech during that time to help write our rules. I heard Charles was getting pretty good at that. Um, Charles great at everything, by the way. <laughs> Thank the, you. Uh, so, you know, it, uh, we, we like the configurator. Everything is good with that. We haven't got it started on our 2D drawings. That uh, kind of was like, let's get it live. Then we're going to worry about the drawing. Sales really wants that part in there. So that's uh, once we get live, we get everything stable. That's going to be the next big push. And the quoting solution. Uh, we started with Sales Portal. We quickly found out that it probably, and maybe not quickly found out, but when we really started pushing it, it's not delivering on our needs as a company. So we're looking at possibly using enterprise quoting. Um, and, you know, on top of that, you know, comes moving to CPQ Cloud. So, the plans is kind of what we were just talking about. So, possibly moving to CPU Cloud Enterprise Quoting. Like, the, our quoting solution is kind of up in the air. We've been working with them, um, adding the 2D drawings. And then the, the end goal is to be able to do a full takeoff with CPQ. Uh, I know some people out there, they, they, we've seen demos of it, have very complex rule sets where you can actually do layout. And um, if we can get to that point, it, it would be pretty revolutionary for our the locker business because we don't really know any real competitors of ours that has that feature yet. So uh, where we're trying to get, and of course getting live moved everything into our production instance yesterday, so I'm pretty excited about it. And then Charles helped me get it running right. Uh, lessons learned. So this is uh, the scary part, I'm sure, for, for Sherry. But the uh, yeah, there's, there's good, bad, and ugly. And as much as I, I like CPQ, you know, it's, it's easy to program with. We've been able to get by with using, using one rules writer, even though it took a while. Um, we found out that, you know, the on-premise version, if anybody is thinking of going to that, the what you, you it's great product, but what you get is what you get. Um, Enforce only 
really developing anymore for their cloud solution. And they're pretty open about that now. Uh, when we were first when we first started the project, uh, I wasn't the one who purchased everything, so I won't say that I was exactly aware of what was going on. But the uh, if if you're happy with what you got, it's great. If you're somebody who's looking towards the future, then you really need to look at the the cloud platform because that seems to be where all the development is going. And you know, the, I, I saw in your I wasn't part of the first three sessions, but I did see where y'all were looking at the augmented reality up there, and they got like horizontal columns and stuff. And yeah, the the cloud configurator has new features that the on-premise one is never going to get. So that's uh one lesson learned. Um, we could go back and start from the cloud, would have, but I don't. It wasn't certified for XA then yet, so didn't really have a choice. The uh, if you're just looking at CPQ and you don't have XA, uh, when we were first shown the demo, you know, and even the the training manual and whatnot, they have the whole example of the chair. You had a chair, and then you had a pillow. Well. You know, we found out pretty quick that XA doesn't have some of the features that other you know, N4 solutions have, like Sightline. Uh, Sightline and I guess I think it was a CSI now, Cloud Suite, I don't know what it's called at N4, but has the most integration with CPQ. So you're not, we weren't able to do some features that were in the marketing material because when it comes to the actual integration with your ERP system, some things are missing with the XA1. That said, you know, Charles has stepped up with the UIG to overcome some of that. And CPQ is flexible enough where we were able to go in, at least with the on-premise version, and set up custom SQL rules, custom um, uh, functions in there to get around some of those limitations. So the flexibility there of CPQ is great, but I don't know how that translates into the cloud version because we haven't actually started using it yet. And I wish we could have had more than one rules writer going back. Uh, I wish we could have started this without COVID going on. <laughs> that would have been nice. Um, but that's uh, lessons learned. Yeah. Like says benefits go, the, the flexibility is great, you know, on, on CPQ side. I wish it was a little more flexible on the XA side, but it, it is what it is, so. Well, thank you, Chase, for sharing your story. I know it's been quite a journey for you, not only from the CPQ side, but also migrating from SAP to XA. It's been <laughs> a heck of a journey, lots of bumps and bruises along the road. So uh, I appreciate your time. It's, trust me, I've been talking to everybody today and we've been going over go live plans and I keep on reminding everybody, you know, we had SAP for 22 years, the same, the same install. <laughs> and over those 22 years, you know, I, I still, we were still making program changes, you know, a month ago. So, you know, our, our system is highly tailored. Over 20 years worth of work went into it. I told them, you know, we'll get there with XA. It, you know, it's not, you can't, you can't do it all at once. So we're, uh, we're, everybody's excited about the go live, Sherry. Yeah. Overall feedback from everybody has been positive. Excellent. It's happening. We're excited to, to get you there uh, too, Chase. I know it's been a heck of a journey. So I do appreciate you taking time for this session today because I know you have so much on your plate. But overall, CPQ product, great. You know, I've uh, really enjoyed working with it, especially compared to the SAP configurator. And like I said, the, the fact that we've gotten away with so much we have only having one rules writer, I think, speaks a lot. Absolutely. So very good. So that concludes our uh, presentations by our customers. And now I'm going to turn this over to Ross Freeman, who is going to share a, what, what I'm calling a very timely announcement <laughs> from Infor. Ross, are you there? Yep, uh, thank you, Sherry. <clears throat> so uh, interesting that uh, there was any number of mentions of the uh, cloud version of CPQ. Uh, so the announcement is that we have released the integration between XA and the cloud version of CPQ. Uh, and those are your KD articles that will tell you how to, how to get there. Uh, so to the, the point that uh, Chase was making, 
the direction really is to go in, in the direction of the cloud. So that's where we put our effort. Uh, we actually did a lot of very significant uh, rework of the integration uh, to adapt to the uh, cloud version. So I think we've got a lot of the functionality that uh, perhaps on-prem didn't have. Uh, but to be perfectly clear, this is the go forward for us. And so we are certainly uh, excited to let you know this has happened and uh, look forward to uh, helping customers get up to the uh, cloud version CPQ. Uh, so uh, that's what I got, Sherry. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Ross. So there are the KB knowledge base numbers uh, that you can look them up in your spare time. Uh, you can jot those down, or um, if you want to email me, we can I can send them out to you as well. All right, so now we are ready to turn this over to the open mic session. So Monica, if you could please unmute everyone. So now, um, uh, if if you want to stay muted, you'll have to do that on your own. <laughs> Otherwise, your mic will be opened up for our Q&A session uh, where we can talk to not only our customers who have joined us, John and Chase, but we have a whole host of uh, CPQ experts that are here to answer all of your questions as well. So we also have Galen Sindelar from Infor. He is the Director of CPQ Professional Services. We have Randy Kubaki. He is the Director of CPQ Product Management. We also have Ross Freeman, who you just heard from. He is the XA product manager and IBMI strategy leader. And then we have also MJ, who is a senior solution architect with XA development with Infor. And then of course our very own Charles Hood, who has been our keynote speakers for all of the other sessions that we've had throughout the summer. And of course myself. So, um, this was meant to be open um, in terms of asking questions. So you can feel free to ask questions. Now I know I want to address one question first before we get started. This question actually came up in our last session, um, our, our journey number three, which was more uh, built on uh, the, the session was around the data migration or integration between XA and CPQ. So Charles got a little more technical in that session um, but I, th or maybe this was the second, I forgot, maybe this was the second session. I forgot now, Charles, but there was a question that, that came in via email to Charles. And I just wanted to, uh, address this one, uh, for, for everyone, since it was a question for, from one person, it's probably a question from others. So the question was looking at the main engineering CAD systems available today, which are Autodesk, Creo CAD and SolidWorks. Which of these three support CPQ 2D design automation and which support CPQ 3D design automation? So Charles, you wanna start with that one? Yeah, sure, Sherry, I'll, I'll start. <clears throat> and then of course we have Randy and Galon from CPQ with us as well. So our rule of thumb as a channel partner is we try to represent CPQ and XA and all in four products as accurately and knowledgeably <laughs> and enthusiastically as we can, but the second rule of thumb is when the kings have spoken, the peasants should hold their tongue. So <laughs> anyway, I'll do my best. And then Galon and, and Randy, if you need to improve or correct anything, please go ahead. Uh, so here's my understanding of how this all works. Uh, so for the 2D automation that you saw way back in session one for the door, you may remember as we were widening and uh, making the door taller, increasing the radius on the door that had the curvature. Uh, it was recalculating all the um, distances between the rails and the sides and everything. So uh, those 2D drawings were being automatically rendered. So here's my understanding, uh, again, with the caveat that Randy and Galon can improve, correct, or otherwise adjust. For the 2D design automation, um, there is built in, um, uh, what's the word, integration, sorry, I'm struggling with that word, integration with um, AutoCAD uh, Inventor. So you need the Inventor module in the Autodesk AutoCAD suite. Uh, also, that also applies to SolidWorks. And so what 
um, CPQ development has done is they provide an add-in to um, Auto, AutoCAD, Autodesk Inventor, or SolidWorks. It's an add-in and it's right there, you know, when you're working in SolidWorks or Auto, um, Autodesk Inventor. And so you can invoke it, you go into sketch mode and it, it's there. I think um, it even says, in at least in the uh, on-prem, it says PCM, which is the former branding for CPQ, but it's still there. And that allows you to generate a kind of base or a model 2D rendering, which can then, if you follow the um, steps in the um, installation and the rules development guide, you can then manipulate those drawings through your CPQ rule sets. So that's my understanding for 2D. It's um, the Autodesk Inventor and SolidWorks. There's built in, and that, as far as I understand, is on-prem and cloud. So that applies both. Uh, for 3D, it's a little different in that the 3D design automation, the built-in integration is, again, SolidWorks. So SolidWorks is solid, if you'll pardon the pun, uh, for the 2D and 3D cloud and um, on-prem. But it, in that case, the, it's CreoCAD and SolidWorks that have the um, integration for the on-prem 3D design automation. Um, right now, if you can produce a 3D rendering that is 3Kit compatible, and my understanding is 3Kit is the engineering drawing rendering tool that's built into salesforce.com. So that's my understanding of what 3Kit is. If you can generate an image or a model that's 3Kit compatible, right now, um, cloud um, CPQ that can handle that and bring it in. And again, you can manipulate it with your uh, CPQ rule sets. Uh, so, and then for as far as on-prem right now, it's the SolidWorks and the CreoCAD, again, have, a, have, a, have an add-in um, that gets added into their software packages that CPQ development has developed. And what I just heard, and uh, this goes along with Ross's announcement, and I, like I said last time, it's a great time to be alive. Um, the next version of cloud CPQ is going to have 3D design automation for the cloud um, for SolidWorks and CreoCAD. So you won't need to have, render it 3Kit compatible. There won't need to be that intermediate step. So that's my understanding. I hope that was clear. So for 2D on-prem and cloud, it's um, Autodesk Inventor and SolidWorks. For 3D on-prem, it's uh, CreoCAD and SolidWorks. And then in the next release of Cloud CPQ, which I believe is going to be February 2023, that we just had a release here in August, it'll be um, SolidWorks and uh, CreoCAD. And right now, for Cloud, as long as you can render a model that's 3Kit compatible, you can use it and manipulate it with the rule sets. So that's where, as far as I know about this. So Randy, hey, Gale, how did he do? <laughs> well, you know, it, it's pretty close. I think the statement was earlier, Charles is great at everything. <laughs> um, maybe what one little, I think one little cleanup thing. Yeah, please, please. On the, so all good with the, the 2D. On the 3D side, in the August release that we just deployed, mm -hmm. we have the ability to interact and we're, we're leveraging a third party to interact with the, the CAD servers that are on-prem those CAD servers um, will be able to interact with the 08 release that just went in from the configurator to those CAD servers on-prem through a third party that we're working with. And then in November, we're gonna have a release and that release will include the ability to go from enterprise quoting through the configurator to the CAD, to the third party to the CAD servers and back. So that's actually come, that second piece to it with the quoting part is coming in November. Oh, wow, great. I think you had said January or February, Charles, somewhere yeah. in there, but that one's actually coming a little bit quicker. Great, great, good. And you had the right SolidWorks, Inventor, Creos and all the right places. Oh, good, so, kept all my <laughs> alphabet soups correct. <laughs> um, good. And probably, I guess I'll add one other thing just for a clarification is, um, Charles had mentioned 3Kit, and 3Kit is 
when you see us or hear us talk about visual configuration, 3Kit is a partner that we work with to provide interactive 3D models so that if you have a product where you want the customer to be able to interact with it more and not just a 3D diagram of it, but an interactive one, that's where the, the 3Kit piece comes into it. Okay, so that 3Kit piece will remain, is that right, Randy? It is, yep. Okay, three, right. Where you hear 3Kit, you'll kind of see hear us talk about visual configuration. And okay. that is our, our interactive 3D models that you can, that you can work with. Thank you for that clarification, Randy. We have uh, another question that came in through chat. Uh, for the transformer 3D model shown in journey number two, how was that model generated? Is this something that was generated in a 3D CAD environment or was it fully programmed and generated in CPQ? If the latter, how much programming time was required to generate the model and all the features? shown in the presentation. Who wants to take that one? Ch Charles, is that you? I can start again, and then I guess I'll let Randy <laughs> adjust, <laughs> correct, and improve. Okay. So uh, so that was the visual configuration for the transformer. And you all may remember, we were able to explode that view. So we're able to kind of remove the metal casing around it. And of course, we were able to spin it and rotate it, uh, zoom in, zoom out, uh, and then we're able to look at like the, the windings and the core um, pieces that were actually inside. Uh, and then the other part of that, besides kind of the rotate, spin, zoom in, zoom out, the other part of that and the um, exploded view was there were some hot zones. That was kind of my term. Um, in that those 3D renderings, for example, the rubber bushings, if you clicked on the rubber bushings, it activated the input box over on the left where you were specifying configuration options where it would then say, hey, you're, you're looking at this particular replacement part. And then you could enter the uh, quantity of the rubber bushings that you needed. Uh, also, there was the longer L brackets and the shorter L brackets as well being re uh, re replaceable parts. So there was those three things. So uh, I guess, Randy, I'll, I'll hand that off to you. I'm sure you're familiar with that rule set, that uh, transformer rule set. Yeah, so in, in that case, the, what they showed was what I mentioned about visual configuration. And so those models that are generated, the, they can take in, in the in 3Kit, they can take a SolidWorks or a Creo model and use that as an input and then expand upon it to put it into that 3D model. Um, and so those models are all generated out of, you know, whether it's a SOLIDWORKS or Creo, but then they get into that, the 3Kit methods that they accept and be able to show, because now you can get into different textures and, and colorings there. Those models reside within 3Kit However, we're using the rules within CPQ to drive what is being displayed or how the model is being interacted with. I think you mentioned, Charles, you had uh, that, it sounds like the one you had, had the, the transformer where I can click a box and it will remove the outside casings, which is really hiding all the stuff anybody would care about. Absolutely right. And yes. then be able to see yeah. inside of it. So right. those can be started in a, in a CAD system or they could be started elsewhere. They, they take a lot of different inputs as into the three kit for the models. Great, great. And I know the um, from looking at them that the um, rules reference guides for those 3D and 2D integrations are very good. It, it, it you know, there's guides for the integration itself using the plugins and then there's guides for, you know, how do you actually manipulate those images with the CPQ rule sets. Okay, very good. Um, I have another question here that came in. Can we have our dealers utilizing enterprise quoting in the field and configure items using mobile devices such as a tablet or smartphone? Who wants to take that one? 
again, I'll start Sherry and again, uh, <laughs> Randy or Galon, go ahead. And uh, I, although Ross and MJ may have something to say here as well. The answer to that is a resounding yes. You use the InforGo mobile app, which is uh, once you have the cloud uh, MT, you know, multi-tenant uh, environment set up, it's super easy. You just basically go into the mingle settings. It gives you a 2D QR code. You scan that. And provided you have login credentials, it fills in the rest. It uses that uh, ION API you know, in the background. It's all very secure, but it's very, very straightforward. I, uh, of course, we already had our cloud multi-tenant um, cloud CPQ environment for a month or two. Um, and then I just downloaded that app to my iPhone, iPhone 7, by the way. So I'm not latest and greatest by any means. Um, and then I scanned that QR barcode and put in my... Um, uh, username or, or email address actually and password bingo I was into in go and I could get into uh, quotes and orders within EQ and I actually ran through a couple of configurations now obviously a phone screen real estate's limited so the iPad version was much better but still you can do it how do you do Randy uh, I can't think of anything I would add on top <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, and poor Go is great. <laughs> it's really great. Okay, have another question here. What formats can drawings in CPQ be exported to? Who wants to take that one? Uh, I, could, I could try this as Galen up. I might have to ask a follow-up. I don't know if that person could, could answer. I'm, I'm assuming, wondering what types of formats, the 2D drawings, uh, typical formats would be any type of standard image format, like uh, an SVG, a JPEG, a, a GIF, any of those types of formats that you might want to use for inclusion in a quotation document or, or including uh, that image as, as part of your proposal package. But there are also ability to export to more of the drawing package formats, like a uh, DWG or a DXF, I think is probably the other popular format. Those, those are some of the um, different file formats. So it can be either more for the end user consumption in an image, or we can export to the different formats that you would want to use to import into a drawing package. So those are the two common use cases that we see customers providing because they may, they may want the end user to be able to import those 2D models into their own, um, you know, larger solution. If, um, in addition to having the the image. Okay, thank you. I don't know, Ted, if there were any other follow-on questions for that one, but um, I have another question here. How long would it take to set up an in for cloud hosted multi tenant environment for my company? Are we talking weeks, months? Galen, is that you? To, to get access to the tenant, that happens pretty much right, right away. Once the contracts are signed, it goes to our cloud operations team and they'll provision the tenant. You'd get a registration email and you'd be able to get in it within just a, a couple of days of, of signing your, your contract and being licensed for, for the application. From, you know, from that point, the implementation times are going to vary across you know, different customers of, of ours many different variables, you know, things like resource availability, how many resources that you have to put towards the project. Those were things that both John and, and Chase commented on, you know, if you, if you only have a, a single person, then it's, you know, obviously going to take longer than if you have multiple people that you could assign and whether those people, you know, can dedicate a majority of their time towards this and you can backfill their day-to-day -day, day roles. You know, other variables would be how much of in for time you would want in assisting with, with the build out. Um, and in addition to just the resource constraints, 
it would also be you know, how many modules are you going to implement? So, you know, configurator is going to be a given. Um, enterprise quoting could be an option. And then also, if you look at the different drawing packages, if you're going to implement 2D and, and 3D automation or 3D visualization. So there's a, there's a lot of different variables. It's not an easy question to answer without, you know, getting into the, the details of the project and how many different configured items do you have? Uh, how complex is your, your quoting uh, requirements, your, your document generation requirements, integration requirements? So, uh, you know, I would say that the majority of our projects, I would say on the, the low end are probably six month implementations, but they can go, you know, to over a year plus with different phases of, of rollouts. Um, some, some customers we continue to work with over multiple years as, as they're rolling out to, to different divisions, different business units, uh, and also different capabilities. Um, they, don't, they don't all go live with everything right away. Maybe adding 2D would be something that would be in a phase two, you know, adding 3D might even be a, a phase three, for example. So there, there isn't a, an easy, an easy answer, but hopefully that'll give you a little bit of idea of, of what we typically see. Um, you know, it's not, it's not something that would, is just a couple weeks, um, but it, it doesn't have to be a year either. Okay, thank you. And another question, our company tried to deploy features and options within XA. Can someone compare and contrast CPQ with features and options? So that's a good one. Who wants to take that one? Uh, I can start again, I guess. And then, of course, Ross and MJ, <laughs> the usual drill. Feel free to adjust, improve, correct. Uh, yeah, wow, wow. So you're kind of talking the very earliest configuration technology in XA. Uh, can't really date it. Precisely, I feel like almost like an archaeologist here. <laughs> Late '80s, early '90s. I do remember when I did start at Mapix Inc. It was already pretty well built in to um, all the uh, COM tables, customer order management, all the um, PDM tables, and uh, you know MO uh, tables. Uh, so, I mean, if someone were to tell me that we have a five-year plan to upgrade XA, and we definitely are promise, 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 we're gonna go from PDM to EPDM as part of that. And of course, you know, upgrade our financials and to the e-financial and all that. Um, I might say, okay, just for the time being, since you're at PDM right now, we can use features and options, but that would be the only case I can even consider. Um, CPQ just, I mean, it's rules driven. It doesn't have all the built-in limitations that features and options have. You get that 20 character S number, and then, of course, that S number um, is, is a very smart number. It's so smart. It has a PhD. You know, every single digit means something. And so, and then you got to decide, well, what's the template for the um, S number? And changing that is a, is a nightmare uh, if you decide you need to redo that. Um, there's all kinds of other limitations. If you have like one character representations for your options, you get, uh, let's see, you get all the letters plus num one through nine. So you get 35 options per feature. If you do the two digit, you get, I think 256, something like that. Um, you got, so all those limits are there. And of course, building it is not something you really want customer facing <laughs> um, compared to like CPQ where um, especially with the 2D, 3D drawing and stuff like that, uh, with the images and all that. Um, so yeah, so features and options is definitely much more for an internal customer service rep, engineer kind of thing. It's very limited um, in its flexibility. It's very limited to being changeable uh, later on. Uh, there's a couple other limitations. I'm trying to remember one of which is, I believe, a feature, an item you flag as a feature cannot be a component of any other, meaning low level code zero, uh, meaning configured subassemblies are not an option. There's just all kinds of uh, limitations. So with CPQ, you have 
the you know what started with KBC and continued on through Chameleon, and now you've just taken it to the next level. It's rules based. It's uh, of course CPQ is um, web based, and uh, you have the uh, the front ends, the EQ, Sales Portal, Comnet two, whichever you're using, and then you have all the great stuff that Randy and Galon have been talking about the 2D, 3D drawings. So it's literally. You know, it's literally night and day. It's literally late 80s versus, you know, 2022 technology. Yeah, and I can add a little bit to that. Um, you know, features and options is no kind of configurator. I mean, that's the, right, the long right. and short of it, that it's yeah, not even yeah. within 100 miles of what you would call a configurator. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's very static. Um, there are lots of limitations also in terms of the, you know, the back end. Uh, you know, in terms of planning around those things and in terms of um, executing on them. I mean, it, it works for very simplified requirements that are fairly routine and don't change much. But I mean, there is no dynamic anything. Uh, you know, it's not a set of rules that create anything. It's just, okay, here's your hierarchy. And you can pick a few things and that's that's it. So strongly recommend not using it unless you have a very simple situation. Read. This is Chase at Penco. We, we actually explored that during our implementation and found out really quickly what Charles was just saying. Yeah, we had a simple requirement. We have a lot of SKUs in our SAP system where the only thing you have to choose on them is a color. Everything's hard build except for the paint color gets swapped out based on what we, we need and we configure it. And, it wasn't feasible really to create 10,000 rule sets in CPQ to just choose a color, right? And we explored using features and options and we found out really quickly, while I could make an option for color, you couldn't actually change the amount of that paint that got applied based on what products you were using. So it's very static, you know, it, yes, it just yes. doesn't work, don't do it. Yeah. But what we did do with CPQ is uh, leverage some of the SQL rules to actually go and fetch the bomb and the routing, put a dummy part number on that uh, bomb, and swap that part number out. So it was a dummy part number called paint with a quantity on it. Swap that part out with the actual paint skew that was chosen in the configurator, and then put it all back into XA. That way we didn't have to really go and rebuild or build a whole rule set around 8,000 different part numbers, right? So like I was saying earlier, kind of being flexible with CPQ, you can, you can do a lot there. Excellent. Thank you. We are coming up on the hour. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. I don't know if anyone wanted to open their mic. I got a question for John. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, Speak uh, away. Uh, yeah, you're on uh, Comnet now. Yes. Um, what, what's driving you to to look at enterprise quoting? Honestly, probably the biggest uh, complaint that we have is the mass change, mass change and update that uh, that uh, CPQ and Comnet just can't seem to figure, or Lexel and, and N4 can't seem to find a a, a, a way forward with that. So in our world, just to make it simple, let's just say that, uh, you know, we have single wall pipe and double wall pipe, uh, just to make it simple, right? One, customers will typically quote it one way and say, hey, you know what, let me add fries with that. Let me go and do the double wall version. And they want to do that on the fly without entering hundreds and hundreds of lines onto a quote. And our, our collective understanding is with enterprise quoting that that feature is native. Unless I'm going to be told differently. I just had Charles add three math update line item things for my XA implementation. So, <laughs> the uh, as far as the native, I know there's something similar to that in Sales Portal. I don't know about EQ, but I know Sales Portal had the the option in there to mass update configuration based on uh, some, some setup. Yeah, this is this is Galen. That feature was carried forward into enterprise quoting. It's referred to as rapid change. So rapid change. Yeah. yeah, you can select 
uh, you know, a new a new color, for example, and then choose which lines that you want to apply that change to, and then it reruns those configurations in the background with that change of color or any number of attributes. And so it'll rerun the rules, validate that those combinations are are still available, and reprice it, and you know, build all the, the new manufacturing logic for that as as well. So it'll do a full validation of those changes. Yeah, I would agree. Like, when we're bidding locker jobs, you know, sometimes the schools don't know what color they're going to be. The lockers are yet, so it's always to be determined. And then when it comes time to release it, okay, now you have 50 line items on your order. Do you really need to go and reconfigure each one and choose a new color? The rapid options kind of solves that. Well, it, it, it's so refreshing to hear a very similar. So that believe believe it or not, that we're almost identical to where. They could quote a million dollar worth of ductwork for a you know a massive stadium or university or a school system, and the details of that job are not known. I mean, we have an idea, but we don't know the exact parts. So all of that work that's gone into the estimate is pretty much lost. It has to be all redone. That's interesting. Yeah, there, well, there was some setup too, but like you said, it is native. So we were if, if we continued with sales portal, we were going to make sure we had that functionality in there. We we tested it on a couple of SKUs and got it working, but we didn't deploy it across everything before we uh, stopped with sales portal. I mean, you know, outside outside of that one mass change, I mean, uh, you know, we are pleased with with the work that Lexel has done. I mean, it definitely has given us something to give to our customers. Um, and, you know, and it, it is very customizable. I mean, it looks it looks new and modern. Um, but it's just that one feature that really is just hurting us right now. Question for the CPQ guys, for customers that do have ComNet or Lexbell, is there any talks of integrating cloud CPQ with ComNet? Uh, this is Randy. No, not at this point. We've not had any discussions around that. Yeah, we haven't, <clears throat> we haven't had any on the XA side either. Um, I'm not sure if there would be any significant limitations but we'd have to have that conversation okay i think we can close the mics and i'm just going to wrap this up really quickly because we are running over um, just wanted to conclude by uh talking to the participants who've been joining us for each one of our journeys um, you know, where do we go from here? Uh, so a couple of things. One is, uh, as you all know, each one of you will receive a thank you gift, our summer series swag bag, which will be available at the Empower Conference. And if you can't make the Empower Conference, we will definitely ship it to you so we can figure that out as we go. Um, and as part of building the prototype, um, you know, make sure you visit the shared site. You should have received an invitation from me, um, but I understand too that they may have gone into spam. So please check your spam. If you did not see an invitation from me, let me know and I will resend um, the invitation or we'll try a different route. Uh, download the, uh, uh, <laughs> well, I wanted everyone to download the uh, template that we created for you to put your data in, but I since learned that you are not downloading it as an Excel document. It's only downloading as a PDF. So we're changing this on the fly. I will email you <laughs> the Excel template, and then you can email back to me a picture of your item, your CAD drawing, and then the Excel template back with your data in it. And then after that, we will submit to you a, a questionnaire. It's a short questionnaire that, that uh, you'll fill out and send back to me. So that's what we need to do to wrap up your prototype, which again will be uh, available uh, for you to see and touch and experiment with at the Empower Conference on the Thursday, September 22nd, the morning of that Thursday, we will have the workshop. So make sure you uh, extend your stay through Thursday and on Wednesday evening, um, ISC will be hosting what they're calling a backyard bash at the pavilion so everyone can participate in that that evening and then stay through Thursday for the workshop. 
So that's all I have. I think we're well over time. So I appreciate again, everyone sticking through the end of this. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me and we'll be in touch as we build out your prototype. Thanks again.